Hello, I'm Ernie Hall. I'm 49 years old. You're in Germantown, Tennessee. If you don't know where Germantown, Tennessee is, I'm going to help you out. Ready? Go to the window. Open it up. Smell all those food aromas. That's coming from my kitchen right here in Germantown, Tennessee. Come on around. I'm going to show you our uh, spices. Check it out. Turmeric, cumarin, coriander, fennel seed, everything a good cook would want right here for disposal. Now, Germantown is really close to Memphis. If I dropped a golf ball, I could pop it right over the back fence, we'd be in Memphis. So, over here is our backup spices. Come on in, sweet. This is where we keep all of our bulk sized spices, onion, garlic, shallot, stuff like that, because we want to keep them out of the sun, right? Direct sun kills herbs. And this is my specialty. What's special about it? How do you like it? Anyway, let's get back over here. We had a question that was in the sheet that was emailed to me. It said, Can you flip an omelet with ease? Yes, I can, but I'd rather use a skillet. So, in using the skillet, we've got that one covered. An egg flipped with ease automatically into the sandwich. Love it! Let's talk about today's meal. Ready? This is huevo esquilfado. No, I don't speak Spanish, but I made this meal up um, a while back. Never had a name for it. And so I started keying all the ingredients into an English to Spanish translator. And huevo escalfado sounds really, really cool. So what I do is we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and start with that. We're going to poach an egg. All right? Always crack the egg in here so you can say, no, there's no shells in that. I'm going to put it in water, not boiling water. We're going to go into that in a second. Ah, tell you what, I almost messed up. Da, 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 da. I want to make a little swirl going on here. Now there's um, vinegar in here. You can use white wine vinegar. You can actually throw in a little bit of white wine. Season it up, make it a little crazy. Then when you put the egg in, it has a tendency to stay right there. Look at there. Stay right on it. Look at that. Oh, that's going to be wonderful. Okay, so we're going to let that go. Set a little timer over here because I like to do that. So that's how you really want to drop an egg when you're doing a poached egg. Three-ish minutes when you've made a bunch of poached eggs, you can look at it, touch it, feel it, and you understand, you know, what's going on with that egg. The other thing that's going on, come on over here, Deborah, is I'm frying up thin potato slices in chorizo and then I'm plating them over here. So fire this up. Just to kind of give you a demonstration of what's going on. I've got chorizo over here, about two or three inches just pinched off. And I let it cook, or let the potatoes cook in the chorizo, right? And the chorizo, this is the only time I want any of that chorizo meat to have anything to do with this dish right now. If it touches the potato and it clings to the potato, great. Other than that, sad but true, the rest of this pork is going away. So I'm going to let that go for a second. Normally, what I do when I'm making these potatoes, I get them done, I plate them, then I add heavy cream to this chorizo, which is what we're going to have over here. I've already added the heavy cream. We're going to let this just warm up. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. And inside of this three minute egg that we have going on, we'll be able to plate this up and show you an amazing meal. Okay. Um, Deborah, what questions do we have from? Um, well, one of them I'd like to know is why did you start cooking? Why did I start cooking? Okay, while Deborah, while I answer that question, I want to show you. Come on around here. Hmm. See how this is happening? See how the oil is leaving the meat? This is wonderful. And so I'm frying this potato. It will not become a potato chip. I don't want it to. I want it to be soft. But look at the oil coming out of the meat. That's what I'm wanting. The end result is that. I'm going to take this potato and plate it. Why did I start cooking? Now normally at this point I would introduce the heavy cream, which is what we have over here to the right, or your left. I was, uh, I came home, I had cooked, I had cooked, I had purchased some fast food. $7.21 in fast food. And I sat down, I'm on a fixed budget, single guy, you know, itty bitty apartment. And I ate. I was like, what was that? I, there was no flavor. And I was never, at that point, I was never into it. I was never into it. I just want to eat, go to work, come home, 
play guitar, do whatever. But all of a sudden, it just really made me mad that I spent $7.21 on a fixed budget on something I can't even remember the flavors. So I picked up the receipt, and I decided to go to the grocery store, and I was going to spend $7.21 on something that would last, and then start learning how to make that last even longer. So I bought a $5 bag of chicken breast, uh, a couple cans of peas, sweet peas, and a bag of rice, and I just started experimenting. That's how I got into cooking. And th honestly, the majority of the recipes... Oh, oh, this smells so good. The majority of those recipes at that time were Emerald Lagasse's. I just loved everything when you read it. Uh, not only the description, but seeing it. It was, just, it was amazing. It was great food. He has the scallops. You know, it's easy to cook scallops, right? But he would take champagne simmer it, vanilla beans, get that vanilla flavor into the champagne, then throw in a little heavy cream, reduce it, and then drizzle that over a scallop. Oh, come on. So, it was uh, Emerald Lagasse. Then it was, uh, I love Tyler Florence to death. It seems like there's not one recipe out there that he has that's, uh, that's bad. We love the fajitas that he does. And um, who am I thinking of? Bobby Flay. Sweet. Bobby Flay. All the spices. I just love cooking with all the spices. So what we had over here, this has come along fine. I'm going to take a slide spoon and get this egg out of here. We were talking for a minute, so we've my internal clock was bothering me, so I know we're ready. So I take those out. Or the one. Put it on a paper towel. Now, the thing I'd like to point out about. Why are you putting it on a paper towel? Okay. Well, a hot. <laughs> and the the um the little I don't know what you call it the little parts of the egg that come off. Here's what I want to show you. Look how beautiful that is. What do people do wrong when they're poaching an egg? They turn the water or they turn the water they turn the heat up so high that it's boiling and those little bubbles when they come up they hit the egg they're cooking it but they're denting that egg our daughter is sick she's been sick today what's the matter Aww. sweetie so those little bubbles dent the egg and it makes it you want to say hi to the food network you want to say hello to everyone come here what's he doing oh, you doing okay now no something is in there ahi uh -huh. Can you help Daddy for a minute? Watch this. So we're going to take this poached Aww. egg. Okay, I know you all wanted a shot from like top to bottom. Um, my daughter comes first. Sorry about that. Um, she's a precious little thing and her stomach's been upset. So we're going to go back to the poached egg because it's so important that you do certain elements of it correctly. You can't just boil it. Again, because I was saying earlier, when, those, when you watch that pot and those bubbles are coming up, they're explosive. They hit the egg and they leave a dent in the egg. So if you don't keep that temperature down while those bubbles are coming up, you want it simmering, then it puts a bunch of dents in the egg and it leaves it really ugly. Deborah, come on in here. I want you to see without this, you know, the extra skin stuff that just comes off. Look, no dents in that egg. It's beautiful. So I'm going to take this over here and I plate it onto the tomatoes. Got the little avocados on the side there. Now what I'm going to do here is I take the sauce. And I'm going to strain it again, like I said earlier. The chorizo is wonderful. I don't want it right now. No, I'll take that chorizo from the other pan. Maybe we'll use it in an omelet later, right? That one we're supposed to flip. So I'm going to put this in here, and all I want is smooth, creamy chorizo sauce. I don't want to scrub this because I'm going to get too much meat in. I don't have the fancy chinois and all the other crazy things. So some are going to get in, but this is going to be really amazing and smooth. Oh, amazing, amazing, amazing. I cannot emphasize enough 
how much I'm in love with chorizo. <laughs> it smells great. If it was a clone, I'd wear it. It tastes great. I can't think of too many things it wouldn't pair with. Even beer. It pairs really well with beer. Okay, so I'm going to move this over here. Definitely not least, some pico, a nice heavy pico, by that I mean nice and spicy, on top. Simply amazing, crazy great flavors going on right there. And it's a spin off of an Eggs Benedict, right? I wanted to, I make eggs every single morning of some style, every single morning just to keep working on it. And of course at night it's the same thing. I've probably made a bazillion mahi dishes. But you keep working on them. Keep working on the sauces. Keep working on the proteins till you perfect them. So it's like if I cook a poached egg yesterday, how can I make a poached egg today even better? So I'll tell you what, never keep a camera on that. I'm going to prove that that's a perfectly poached egg. Somebody's probably going, yeah, show me the yolk. There it is! <laughs> See, I love that. This is wonderful. That's going to taste absolutely incredible. Um, again, don't want the potatoes firm. I want them nice and soft. I'm not making potato chips here, right? Okay, let's go back to questions. Let's figure out what you guys want to know. Never? Okay. Are you competitive with your cooking? Do absolutely. you enter competitions? Absolutely. Hi, hey, sweetie. Oh, how are you, doing, are you feeling sweetie? better? Oh, you want to come up here, Daddy? She's a daddy's girl, that's for sure. <laughs> um, I was the lead cook on a gumbo competition for Harley Davidson. I was asked to be their lead cook. And of course, we took fourth place, so I renamed the gumbo fourth place gumbo. Of course, in my opinion, it was the best, number one. But uh, we took fourth place, so I renamed it. We're fourth place gumbo. If you look over here at these guys, this is our first place trophy. This is our second place trophy. So what we do is we host cooking competitions in our backyard, and then I pay for and introduce the protein, and I give everyone a spice rack, and then I invite over three or four other cooks that I know, and we just go at it. We keep all the judges inside, and we cook all day long, and then we let the judges decide who won. So, of course, I'm co competitive, and it's kind of like going out to eat. You go out to eat and you spend so much time just making this sauce that just got drizzled over an egg. And when you go out to eat, you're like, this better be right. So then I can go home and I can deconstruct and make exactly what I had at a nice five-star restaurant. It's a bit frustrating, so I think that's where a little bit more of the competitive side comes from. What do you think, Huey? Go ahead, Mommy. So tell us, how good are you? I'm freaking great. Who spends this much time perfecting things? Who perfects eggs? Bacon. I can't count to you the millions of ways I've made bacon just to look for a different profile, a flavor off of bacon. Bacon is bacon, but you can do a bazillion things to it to get drizzle it with honey. Put cracked pepper on it. Pepper! Ready for this? Over here, sweetie. Only tell a cherry cracked pepper. If I have to use white pepper, you know, like you would like in a pico. You don't want to use cracked pepper in that. Tell a cherry pepper. Yeah, if you haven't had tell a cherry pepper yet, you have to experience it. It's fruity. It's not like a table pepper. It's not ground all the crap like you get in a restaurant. This is really good pepper. You have to go out and try it. Yeah. Do you have a recipe collection? Oh my God, I have a huge recipe collection. Pick one. I'll show you. All right, I've got way too many recipes to show you books galore, a shelf that's overflowing, a bookshelf in, the, in, the, in our living room that looks ridiculous because there's so many books on it. There's a stack of books on top of our filing cabinets. It just goes on and on and on. However, this is like where it all began and just continued to snowball from there. Follow me back. Should we eat? 
This is about one eighth of our collection of Food Network uh, recipes. It's just ridiculousness because it just keeps going on and on and on. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, I'm going to look at them all and make them because when you read them, I want to make them. Then it's like chicken with creamy mushrooms. Mini quiche. This is from my mother, Food Network. Mini, quiche, mini onion quiche. It's just, oh my God. So, yes. This is where it all started, and believe it or not, uh, after I had a beer with Emerald on my boat, I came back home and was going through my Food Network recipes, and right around 85 to 80%, 87% of all the recipes that we have are from Emerald. Because that's when I, when I was starting and just getting really crazy about flavors and those scallops, and it, it was... It was nuts, but it was really kind of cool to come home and realize that so much of the influence had come from him and seeing what he did on TV and the recipes and how he touches and makes food great. So, okay. Yes, I have recipes. All right. Let's see. What are you like in the kitchen? What kind of question is that? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a bit very clean on the kitchen. I would never have used three pans to produce this tonight. Of course, uh, I was trying to show the progress, how you do the potatoes from here to the sauce. That would have been that would have been incorporated right here. But I wanted to have that ready instead of spending all this time cooking. I'd rather answer questions. All right, and what's your earliest cooking memory? Oh my goodness. Um, the Boy Scouts. The earliest memory I have of cooking is the Boy Scouts. I was going for my cooking badge, and you had to do three things. I was at the Boy Scout Jamboree, which is a Jamboree, Jamboree, whatever. Huge event where all the Boy Scouts once a year get together and everybody works on all these different skill sets and you're going to get your badges. Well, I had to make three things to get my cooking badge. I had to make chocolate milk, I had to cook bacon, and I had to make scrambled eggs. So, that's all they do. They give me this giant wok, and of course I was probably as big as Gianna, so the wok looked huge. Probably about this big, but I don't know. Um, they gave me this giant walk and said, cook, that's it. And they watch you, and if you get it right, you get your, your cooking batch. Um, so from those three things, I made bacon, and then I made scrambled eggs, and then, in the same walk, I made chocolate milk. So it turns out, chocolate milk is not appreciated when it tastes like bacon and scrambled eggs, so I did not get my cooking batch. Hmm. Great story, right. sweetie. And it's horrible all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. What is your favorite cooking utensil and why? Oh, Lord. I would be remiss not to say the bloody knife. Titanium coated knives. That, uh, Deborah has purchased me all of my really cool knives. Um, but when I got to this titanium, I'm at a dead stop right now. I'd, it would be hard for me to break away from these. These are amazing. But, in mentioning the knife, I have to say, I honestly think that my favorite thing in the kitchen is the Six Eye Thermidor. It is amazing. Six Eyes, when I got it, it was, you were supposed to tie it into your house gas. I didn't. I contacted Thermidor. Got an LP kit. I changed out all the jets. Changed out all the jets and the knobs. And I run an LP tank underneath here. I can cook for three months on an $18 tank. High BTUs. These two eyes over here are saw size. So you can turn it on. Turn it within this range where it'll turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. And it gets really delicate with the sauces. So it's not going to hurt anything. How you doing, sweetie? You feel better? You feel better? You do? Okay, can mommy and daddy work now? And we'll be in the living room in a minute. Okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> we'll be right in there. So, this is in the kitchen. Pride and joy. This thing is amazing. Nothing gets done in the kitchen without a good knife. But as far as the toys in the kitchen, all the stuff that we've got, I love the first one. All right, and do you want to show them what you gave me for my birthday? Don't oh. you? <laughs> um, I made a mess, a huge mess in the kitchen one day, trying to make fajitas for a bunch of Marines that were over here. I'm a Marine, had a bunch of Marines come over, 
One of them was Spanish, and he brought fajita meat that was pre-seasoned, so it's orange, right? And everything you touch turns orange. So it made a mess. And then Deborah was like, it'd be really nice if we could just step on something and the water would come on. Hold on, sweetie, we're cooking. Actually, we're working. So I went to Lowe's, show everybody what this is. I went to Lowe's and I bought these pedals and I come up with my own configuration underneath the sink to where when you hit the pedal, you get hot and cold water. Throw them again. So, that's a neat treat to have in the kitchen, any kitchen. I mean, hands passing underneath, hands free, all that stuff, that's great. Pedals, love it to death. Alright, and uh, you want to show us your pantry? I would love to show you the pantry. Of course. <laughs> okay, so the pantry started out as a laundry room. When we bought the house, it was a laundry room. So I took all the connections for the washer and dryer, spun them around, punched them into the other room, turned this into a walk-in pantry. Check out the lights on this. Motion activated. That was my idea. Isn't that great? That's wonderful. Everybody should have that. So, then I dropped in some 15-inch uh, shelves and just, bam, locked out a pantry that you walk into. This is a giant room. Um, we have all of our dry peppers here. I, mean, I could go through this for, for hours going over what we have in here and what we do with them because it's really amazing. But it's really nice to have a walk-in pantry. We're truly blessed to be able to have a room where we can just walk in and pick food from. I have other cooking uh, utensils in here, large and small on the counters, but this is a 33 inch griddle. It's exactly what I have on my food boat down in Florida. I have two of them, but I, I leave one assembled and one on the side. And we only use it for when the volumes get really high, but 33 inch griddle. Everything gets cooked on it, freaking amazing. It's LP gas, gotta love it. And so that is the pantry in a nutshell without getting into details. All right. There's more in for us for you. Come on. Mommy and Daddy are working. I know. It's been really sad. Do you like to have help in the kitchen or are you a control freak? I'm not a control freak. Um... <laughs> help in the kitchen. Um, you know, my mother's helped in the kitchen. Deborah helps in the kitchen. Deborah's mother's helped in the kitchen. Different times when we have a bunch of friends over, you know, we'll have one or two of them uh, help. But I'd much rather be completely responsible for everything that comes out of the kitchen. So, it's not free. It's just control. And why do you know you could win this competition? Who put... I, I, I don't know. I know tons of people who cook. I know chefs. I know people. We have friends who own restaurants all over the nation. I don't know anybody that puts this much time into how can you cook an egg better every single day? How can you cook bacon better every single day? Okay, stop. Everything from mahi mahi to burgers to steaks, everything is perfected every single time you make it. And she's having so much fun with us. <laughs> That's a two-year-old for you. <laughs> and she's feeling better. Oh, for sure. And that's great. Who all do you cook for? Who all do I cook for? Uh, primarily, um, of course, my family. Uh, we have a nice house for having, you know, parties over. We have a pool in the backyard. It's all glass on the back. So all of our friends, family, of course, baby Gianna, she gets to eat great food and will eat everything. Okay. I know, but we're working right now. You feeling better? Your tummy uh -oh. better? Uh oh, go see. So I cook for everyone, our friends. Uh, you know, my wife cooks as well, but primarily I cook for everybody. I like to cook down in Florida, make sure those people get to taste our food. So. All right, and what would winning a large cash prize mean to you? A bazillion dollars. I hear they're promising a bazillion dollars. I haven't seen what that looks like on paper. I can imagine. Um, right now, I think everyone in America could appreciate 
having a large sum of money that you know they could put into their family. If um, the love and dedication that I put into food brings that our way, thank God. I mean, just uh, it would help us out. We're, we're just normal American people. We, we have a house note as well. We have bills. We have a two and a half year old daughter with no medical coverage. So, you know, everybody could benefit from that kind of money. I would, I would love to be able to take my food boat into a bigger project, you know, across America. Um, more cities. That would be great. It, would, it just, it would help us out so many people, help everyone out. And why do you know you're going to win this competition? Because nobody does this. Who does this? Every bloody morning I'm working on something. And I know, and I told my contact that I work on eggs. Every bloody morning. And it's because, well, primarily I have a two and a half year old daughter who wakes up and she wants to eat something. So it's what a treat to get to work on something every morning. And it's just like uh, mahi. I have cooked a bazillion mahi-mahi dishes. What does that give me a chance to do? Different sauces, different ways of cooking mahi, different ways of looking at that fish and knowing when it's going to be done, right? Perfection. It's, I don't know, it's just what I do. Uh, and who's your biggest influence on cooking? <laughs> who's my biggest influence on cooking? Oh, okay. Um, it would have to be my biggest influence would have to be my wife because mm -hmm. her palate is incredible. I don't get to cook for monster chefs, right? Um, our friends who own restaurants own restaurants, so that means they work a lot. Deborah's palate is incredible. Um, her knowledge of food is incredible. And it's a treat to me to work on food constantly and to have her enjoy it. You know, and our friends and our family as well. But I know that if I try taking a shortcut on food, never going to get it. My story that I tell is chicken marsala. I was making chicken marsala. Everybody loves it. Deborah's at work. I went to the liquor store. They didn't have the brand of chicken marsala or chicken marsala, of marsala wine that I always use. So I thought, I'll go with this one. Deborah came home, took a bite, looked at me and said, you changed the wine that level of palate, insanity. And all of that that I get from Deborah is also, it, it helps me immensely. I always get some form of feedback or I get some form of education from what her, she knows and what her palate knows. So, Thank that's you. That's who. <laughs> uh, what sets you apart from the other home cooks? Um, I think everybody, all the home cooks cook a lot. All the dedication that they have, that's great. Uh, I work to details. I love food so much. I work to the details of everything I'm making, whether it's simply an egg or simply a sauce or simply some kind of protein. I work it to death. Um, I think one of the questions was, do you have great knife skills? Yes, I do. What do I consider better? Deliberate knife skills. Do I consider somebody who can crank out an amazing sauce in three minutes? Or do I want an amazing sauce, the exact same one that took 15 minutes? I'd rather have the 15 minute sauce. More time and dedication put into that. What sets you apart from all the other home cooks? Yeah, oh, man. oh, I know. Hang on. Oh, she might be cheap. You want tomato? Yay. What other two year old you know likes tomatoes? Oh, sweetie. Hey. <laughs> what a great baby. I'd rather have tomatoes than anything else. <laughs> that good? Good job. I'm going to take it in the living room with you so you can watch TV. Those are hot. You oh. can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll be in there in a minute. Okay. Question again. All right. What sets you apart from all the other home cooks? Um, 
I honestly think that what sets me apart from everyone else is this isn't something that I made up so it would look cool on tape tonight. This is something I made up for breakfast. This isn't how we play because we want to impress all of our friends. This is how we play all of our food from top to bottom. Burgers, steaks, an egg, everything always has this level of detail in it. We don't... This is how we cook, this is how we eat. Every meal, every day. I don't think the rest of the people who want to be on this show cook this way every single meal, every single day. I just don't see it happening. I don't. I don't I've, I've never met anyone who's like us. We've never gone to one of our friend's house who own restaurants and other businesses and they eat like this. They don't, they cater it in, they get a platter from wherever, what the heck ever, right? It's not what happens here. We eat like this every single day, every single meal. Um, personality. I have a great personality. I like me. You like me. It just works out that way. I've never met a stranger. When I meet a stranger, I give him a name. I call him Chuck. Hey, Chuck! He's no longer a stranger, right? Because he's now my friend. Um, and I know there's going to be a lot of people trying out to get on this show who think that they're better than me. And they got the little picture of Ernie, right? They see Ernie, they see his food. Well, guess what? I'm coming for them too. Guns a blaze. They're not going to see me coming. I have so many secrets up my sleeve. An egg, the least of which. So, I'm Ernie Hall. I live in Germantown, Tennessee. I'm 49 years old, and I can kick everyone's butt in America when it comes to cooking food. Call me.